Blog Talk Radio. You are now listening to the show far. The show far is blown to uh, coordinate a queen or a king. The show far is blown to inspire the people to do their thing. And today the show far is being blown to call us to open our minds, open our hearts, and open our relationships. That one might be a little step for all of us, but you know what? Today our guest, uh, guest on the show is going to help us out with that, help us maybe wrap our mind around or at least look at it a little differently. Um, you're now listening to Faux Show Holistic Health on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Shofar, from Faux Show Energy Work. And today my guest is Carl E. Stevens, Jr. Uh, Carl is a uh, metaphysician. He's a life and love coach. He's a father. He's an author. Um, he's the author of actually uh, Finding Male Sexuality, Tame Your Woman, and The Art of Open Relating, which is the book we're going to talk about today. Him and his wife have been married like 22, 23 years, and for the first like 10 years they were monogamous. Then they decided together to open their relationship up. So I'm definitely looking forward to talking to this brother. Let's go ahead and bring him on. Carl, are you out there? Everything's good. What's going on on the West Coast? Oh, man, you know how we do out here, man. You got a little taste of that. You know what I'm saying? You, you, <laughs> you, you, you. I saw your post, man. He was like, oh, shit, man, should I go holler at this one? Or, nah, I'll probably see another one in like five minutes. That, that's how them waves be coming over here, man. Yeah, I, I was more, I was just in awe, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of the women out in that area, how they're so much more conscious about how they look and their body and stuff like that. And I understand it with that whole, you know, L.A., Hollywood vibe, but it's still, when you see it live compared to, you know, like where I am on the East Coast, it's a, it's a market difference. You see what I'm saying? For sure, man. You know, I'm, I'm from Virginia. I grew up in the 804, Richmond, Virginia. So for me, same thing. You know, some decent women, especially you go up to the to the DMV, but um, that actually that area is pretty nice. But you know, when you came when I came out here, I was telling my boys back home, man, like all motherfuckers got to do is live. Like you don't got to go out to you don't got to make no special trips to do nothing, no clubs, nothing. Like just live, just go get gas and and eat, motherfucker, and you will meet beautiful women. Like period. Like there's a target exactly, uh, Carl, that uh, in an area called Mission Valley in San Diego, man, is just like legendary. Like you just Are go you up serious? in the target. And, yeah, it's, it's a target, bro. So it, it's it's amazing out here, man. I call it, matter of fact, I call it San Diego. I don't call it San Diego. I call it San Diego because it's more like a beautiful woman. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. What I usually do anyway, because I don't do a lot of backstory. I make sure I put all the, I put a lot of links in there for you and how people can get in contact with you in Kenya. Um, so, but I like to just go ahead and jump in, man. Um, like I was saying in the intro, though, man, like. You know, 22, 23 years in with y'all, one of the things that always hit me about y'all is that y'all didn't jump straight into open relating. Like, y'all took 10 years before you even went into it. So, uh, first off, can you tell us what is open relating as far as your definition and why is it important in this day and time? Yeah, my definition of open relating is basically like freedom-based relating, where it's basically um, where you're allowed to be yourself. You know, you're allowed to... Um, interact with other human beings uh, to explore the things you want to explore, not just in terms of relationships, but whatever it is. And um, and that's what the baseline of the relationship is. That's the baseline of your life, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's basically a, a way of living your life that doesn't involve, um, you know, potential rules or protocols. Instead of rules okay. and protocols, you know, you operate based on integrity, you, you operate based on strength of character. So, for example, with my wife and I, what governs our relationship is what we choose to do for each other, right? Um, mm. You know, it's the love that we have for each other, and that's what brings about, you know, us raising our kids together, working our business together, you know, us sharing openly and honestly with each other, that kind of thing, right? It's not that if I don't say something to her or do something with her that, there's a penalty for that or that, you know, she has the right mm. to castigate me, et cetera. So open relating is basically just saying, look, who are you as a person, right? Um, gotcha. Be that person and then connect with other people who have like mind or like vibration as you. And everything works out 
um, the way it's supposed to from a relationship perspective. Nice, man. Wow, I like that integrity based as a, as opposed to uh, you know the you know the the the, the common way that we we've, we've seen out there uh, represented in, in in media and stuff like that. That's dope, man. Um, you know, and one thing that impressed me with you and Kenya now from the jump too that you don't you know you don't dog uh, monogamy out. You know, it's not like you shit on it and be like, no, you know, you should just be polyamorous. You know, all human beings are polyamorous and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, you just let it, really what I get from your message is that you're just letting people know that they have a choice. Like there's, there's a bigger, uh, there's more things at the table, you know, than just monogamy. There's nothing wrong with monogamy that might work for you. And matter of fact, another thing that stood out is that you, you actually uh, say that a lot of people shouldn't jump into open relating. You, you actually say, get mono- you know, master monogamy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think open relating is for everybody, and the reason why is because we live in a monogamous culture. So basically, mm-hmm. monogamy is what's taught, it's what's expected, uh, it's what we learn, it's what we see in movies and television, right? So right. it's just who we are. It's, it's embedded in our belief system as human beings in the West. So right. because you are, because we come from that background, you know, open relating and other forms of relating are things that we need to educate ourselves about things we need to explore. One of the big issues with open relating versus monogamy is that open relating, you know, you don't have to really lie about who you are and about your behavior, right? Uh, in monogamy, right. you kind of have to lie about it. And, you know, and I'm speaking from my personal experience, you know, in terms of growing up in a monogamous household, being monogamous myself for most of my life. You know, you have mm-hmm. to lie. You can't share certain things because people in monogamy tend to take your truth as a potential um, characterization of who they are, uh, and that's not the case. So people have got to learn to, you know, communicate. They've got to learn to accept the other person for who they are before they even look at open relating or or polyamory or or that type of thing. So I really don't suggest that open relating is not for most people. Um, Mm. It's If people want to look at it, learn about it, they can read my book about it, The Art of Open Relating. Uh, They can watch shows about it like, the new Spike Lee show that's out um, that he oh, just yeah. released on, on Thanksgiving. Um, she got to have things it. Of that nature, yeah. And fine. yeah, she's got to have it. Then, yeah, you can do that type of thing and start to understand what it is. But, no, it's not something that most people should just jump into. You're going to end up acting in a monogamous way, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to wreck and ruin your open relating experience, and you'll blame open relating for the bad experiences that you have. What I've always told people is that, Um, you know, any mature adult can have success in any relationship style, right? And that goes for monogamy as well. The thing that you have to do in monogamy that most people don't do is they're not really honest about, you know, the the challenges they face and how they really feel. And that's where the difficulty comes in. But if you're able to, if you're a mature adult, then you should be able to have success in monogamy. You know, like Kenya and I, the way we came to be open is that we were able to communicate the fact that we had feelings for other people. And we, mm. we were willing to go to our marriage counselors and talk about that and receive counsel and get feedback from third parties and that kind of stuff. Like, we didn't hide how we felt. You know, I told Kenya about, you know, my desire to be with other women. She told me about her attraction to other men. Like, we could talk through that. That's why we were able to be successful from a, even a monogamous standpoint. And that's why we were able to transition more easily into open relating, you know, and be like the leaders in, in the open relating industry and that type of thing. But, but most people just aren't there when it comes to a monogamous culture and that has to be fixed. And, that, and, and so far that can be seen just in terms of, you know, the high divorce rate we have, the high infidelity rate we have. Um, you know, we're just not ready for open, honest relating just yet. Word, no, true, true, wow. I like that, though. You you know, everything that you're saying there is definitely, uh, you know, resonating with me, man, because, uh, you know, just the trials that I've seen with monogamy, and I think a big part of it is people being afraid to really just speak their truth, you know, in situations like, like we have to, I remember Osho saying that if either sex, if we start acting like the only person that we see is is our mate, eventually you're not going to see anybody of the opposite sex. It's going to make you frigid, you know, like, that's not normal. It doesn't mean that we necessarily have to move on those impulses or whatever. But you, you got eyes, motherfucker. You like, you go to that damn target. I'm talking about. You are gonna see, you know. So, it's, it's. I love what you're talking about here, man. Um, 
uh, without going too deep into it, but, you know, it was in your book, and I think just uh, maybe just giving a, a little bit of it, uh, the, seven, the, the, the open relating steps, like uh, the three things that you talk about that we must do. I mean, you, you, I definitely recommend people get your book, but can you go over that just briefly with them? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's three basic steps that I go over in the book. The first step is um, learning to be authentic in terms of your communication, which is basically, you know, being truthful, right? So, again, there's a whole, you know, and, again, a lot of people are in denial about their, where they are in the truth scale, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and people also get confused between um, confession versus, you know, being honest. They get confused between, between you know, privacy, which we're all as mm. human beings entitled to certain levels of privacy versus confession, right? And so you have, we've have got to understand what it means to be authentic and honest um, in relationships and in life in general. So phase one mm. is, is really going through that, right? Phase two is, hey, let's learn to um, relate to other human beings without sexuality, right? So how do I actually interact with, you know, other women um, in, in a way that's open, that's honest, where, you know, sex is not brought into the equation? And the third, the third phase is where you actually bring the sexuality into it, right? So in the book, but the point of the book is I want to go through each of those phases so people can understand what is involved in moving from one phase to the next and why it's important. And so, though, to me, those those phases are critical. You know, if you don't go through those phases, you know, for example, if you don't have authenticity in your relationship, then you're really not in an open relationship, in my opinion. Um, and, and, again, it doesn't mean you've got to confess. It's not about confession or sharing mm-hmm. everything that you do because you do have the right to privacy, but you shouldn't feel like uh, you have to hide who you are in order to relate to other people. I love it, man. No confessions, no uh, no hail marys, or you know, uh, rotary beads, beads, or anything like that. Just uh, that's dope, man. And and you know, one of the things that I've seen out here, um, and I like to talk on this topic a little bit. So you know, especially out in San Diego where I live, there's a big you know polyamorous community that kind of mixes into tantra, and a lot of people want for, uh, actually connected to. They think of tantra and they think right away polyamorous because of. Uh, how it kind of goes down in my community, which is that's fine. But what I find, at, you know, and you can, I would love to see what you, your take is. A lot of men, men that call themselves polyamorous, on the low are one in polygamy, or polygyny, or right. whatever, where where is one one man, multiple women. I don't, you know, and so if you could talk on that a little bit. Yeah. So again, that's that's an example of what I was saying before. You have men who they have a monogamous mindset. Right. So again, mm. and, there's, and there's things involved with with, with monogamy and, and Western culture, Westernized modern culture that we just, we just have to understand and accept. Okay. So modern mm. modern culture, Western culture, tends to be man centric. It tends right, to be right, right. Uh, you know have a heavy patriarchal overtness to it. Right. And so right. with that, there there comes certain entitlements. You know, men feel that they are entitled to certain things that women aren't. One of the examples of what men feel entitled to is they feel entitled to have multiple women as opposed to women being able to have multiple men, right? So it's a big thing right. in our culture. Uh, when men are with multiple women, that's considered a good thing. You know, you're, you're an alpha male or whatever. When a woman's with multiple right. men, she's considered a hoe or a slut or a prostitute, right? So that's, right. So that's a part of Western culture. It's part of, of, of patriarchal culture, and it's a part of monogamous culture. So what happens is men take that belief system, right, mm. about, you know, what a woman is and what a woman needs and, who's, and, and that type of thing, and they take it into, quote, unquote, polyamory. And when they take mm. it into polyamory, it starts to, like you said, it looks like polygyny, which is one man, right. many women. Or it looks like a, a shade of polygyny where the, where the guy's like, well, yeah, okay, she can be with other partners, but they should all be women. And I've got mm. to be there for it. You know, we can do threesomes and, and that kind of stuff. But, no, she can't be another man. So these are men who, are, again, they're, they're more monogamous in their mindset. Um, they're, they're not educated about, you know, what it means to be uh, tantric or what, it, what the feminine is, let alone the masculine. And so when they move into it, again, they just end up screwing things up again. So 
I, I did a, a Facebook Live video about that where I talked about a lot of men who are calling themselves polyamorous, but they're really monogamous mm-hmm. or they're really, you know, polygynous or whatever. And, like, that kind of stuff, women need to be aware of that. You know, if your man has an issue with you being with another man, then he's not open, he's not polyamorous, right? It's just period, point blank. He's probably monogamous or, at the very least, he's polygynous. So that's, that's the big difference. If, if you're open, again, I have certain needs and desires for me. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so right. I, I expect my partners to honor that. But, okay. but the catch-22 is I also have to live that and, and provide that for my partners. Like, she's going to have certain needs as well, and I have to respect mm-hmm. that. I might not like it. It might not always feel good to me. But I have mm-hmm. to do my best to support her in that because why? I want her to support me in mine. Mm-hmm. And again, that's where you, when you talk about monogamy, and again, monogamy comes from Western culture and and from capitalism, which is capitalism is about ownership, right? You know, the ownership right. of assets and everything is basically an asset, including a man or a woman in marriage. So you know, like mm-hmm. that pussy is mine. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, you know, men really. They get caught up in that, and they don't understand that that a woman deserves to have everything that they're asking for as well, mm. if that makes sense. That makes total sense, man. And I remember you sharing at the workshop that I saw you at in L.A., man, about, you know, the first time uh, Kenya brought that up, like, you know, you were saying how you wanted to bring on another woman, and she's like, well, you know, maybe I can bring on another man. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, like, exactly. Not even, like, exactly. Like, and I think that's a lot of men. Like, that that can't even fathom that. Right. You know. Yeah, I, I couldn't. You know, I couldn't. And I think it's important for people to know when they when they look at me, they gotta understand that I was basically, I was a standard man out in the street in terms of my mentality. Sure. Right. So, I was married. You know, I was monogamous in my mindset, and then I expanded that. I wanted to be polygynous. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want a multiple right. wives, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the house and, like, all these kids running around. Like, that was my vision for myself. And mm. then it wasn't until I got into um, Tantra as a philosophy, right, mm. and and talking to some individuals who, you know, really had, you know, a, a higher level of understanding that I was able mm. to expand my awareness as a man and understand that, um, the way I was looking at relationships was limited and that mm-hmm. I didn't understand the feminine. And that if you don't understand the feminine as a man, like if you're a man looking for polygyny um, mm-hmm. and you expect sexual fidelity from your woman or your wives, then you really, you're not, you can't be tantric, right? You, you right. don't understand what the feminine is. You can't, you can't bring tantra into a situation where you're trying to cage feminine energy. It, it can't be caged. And if right. it is caged, it means it's damaged. It means it's suppressed. And if it's damaged and suppressed and, and you're a part of that, then you can't heal it. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like Tantra mm-hmm. is about empowerment. It's about freeing the feminine, about, about freeing the pleasure centers, about opening women up to orgasm, opening men up to orgasm in deeper forms of pleasure and going beyond the physical, beyond, beyond the body, right? But if, you're, mm-hmm. if you have your partner in a cage – by by automatically you've disqualified yourself from reaching the uh, limits and bounds of what where tantra can go. Like yeah, you can do a technique, you might see some increases in in, in certain things around your sexuality, but it's limited. You know the Kama Sutra says a, a woman's sexual appetite is insatiable. You know her ability. Mm-hmm. My tantra, you know, teaches that a woman can have an orgasm every eighth of a second for hours. You know, like mm-hmm. she, she, he said she needs to be free. You know, you can't cage her. So, again, right. most people who practice Tantra, they don't really understand what they're doing. They have some techniques. They've got a little bit of information, but they don't actually live a Tantric life. They don't actually live a life of sacred sexuality. And that's where everything kind of breaks down. You see what I'm saying? Like you can't, totally. Tantra is not a technique or a series of techniques. It's a lifestyle. That honors, right. you've got to go to the, to the energetics of it, to the masculine, to the feminine, to how the masculine and feminine dance. You've got to learn to expand the masculine and feminine into its many components. Like within mm-hmm. the, the Juju Mama Love Academy, we've got 
you know, nine total genders that we deal with, not just two. Why? Because right. you, you can't just, it's not just one type of woman or feminine expression, not just one type of man or masculine expression, it's multiple. You know, right. and, and Tantra is one of the tools to help display that in action. You see what I'm saying? So it's, totally. it's, a, it's a very, very deep piece. <laughs> and right. Right. And the Tantra community needs, again, it's, it's, it's monogamous people. And when I say monogamy, again, I'm going back to capitalism, Western culture, that's where we kind of get that. It's mm-hmm. monogamous people taking their mental philosophy around relating and masculine and feminine and trying to bring it into an art that is way more expansive. Tantra is a right-brained art. Mon- right. Monogamy is a left-brain relationship style. Right? right, it's it's masculine. It's totally, Tantra it's totally. is feminine, so you can't mm. really mix those two together. Again, I'm not saying huh. if you're if you're monogamous and you and you bring tantra into your life, will you see improvements? Without a doubt, you certainly will. You sure. just can't maximize where tantra can take you. It's only you're limited. You see what I'm saying? Well, totally, man. Because I, I I know from you know uh, what you shared on, and one of your other things, man, like, and what you're hitting on right now is that. The very roots of it. I mean, like in Chinese medicine, we they talk a lot about the roots, the the yuan qi, the the source qi. And what you're talking about at the roots, why it would be thrown off is because at the roots, uh, power is a feminine principle. Correct. Without a doubt. So, yeah. And you can't you can't cage power. You can only channel it. Woo. Right. And when you Say try, again, and right when, you, no, when you. I'm about to call you Rock Kim right there, bro. Say that again, please. That's all right. Yeah, Rock Kim, Carl, you're the one. And so, what happens? What happens when you try to cage power in Chinese medicine? That's it's called a blockage, right? Right. And those right. blockage for they 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 form conditions in the body where the chi running through the body is either under or overexpressed because that blockage is going to affect other systems. Within mm. the body, other like in Chinese medicine, other meridians. You see what I'm saying? Right. So right. Right. Th- that's what that's what people understand. You can't cage the feminine without ultimately affecting the masculine and everything the feminine is attached to, which is what everything in the world, because power and energy run through everything. Mm. So again, when you look at the world and you look at that's our sure. communities and et cetera, the reason why the, our communities are the way they are is because what the power source has been cut off. The same way in Chinese right. medicine, you can go into certain neighborhoods and look, and you can apply the theory of Chinese medicine. Like if you read the Yellow Emperor's Guide to, to you know, to medicine, you can medicine. see where the illnesses is, where the blockages are within just the communities. You, you know what I'm saying? So exactly, it, it translates it, it, directly. There you go. You can see it in everything, and you can see it in in family structures. You can see it in extended family. You can see it in government. You can see it in in communities, it's everywhere. So this is why, you know, open relating is important as a concept so people can understand, well, I have to be free. Right. And look, it's not even about the, the, the issue is really with people within themselves. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's, right, right. you've got to give yourself permission. Nobody's stopping you from doing anything. No, it's your fears and your insecurities right. Right. about yourself that's that's projecting people who are who are castigating you about your behavior. Right. You see what I'm saying? Not you sure. see how cuz we project reality so you're you're projecting you know uh criticism. You're projecting mm-hmm. somebody holding you down, but that's not true. Nobody's stopping you or anybody else from doing anything. You know, you're free, but you have to give yourself permission. You've got to have courage. You see what I I'm saying? Remember, uh, I- no, totally, bro. I remember back uh, 2014, man, when I, I came to you with a situation of, you know, basically having the exact things that you're talking about reflecting back to me and from my relationships. And, um, you know, it was pivotal, man, it, you know, between that and some, some work I did, some African spirituality, between that counseling session and that, it, it, it totally uh, changed my mindset and changed my reality for me, man. So I appreciate you. Yeah, brother, without a doubt. And, it, you know, it's the work. We, are, we have to do the work. I wanted to ask you, man, uh, you know, I know it's a way deeper topic. It'd probably be another, you know, 
get you on another time at some point, man. But just maybe briefly, because we we down to like, uh, so maybe it could be your wrap up thing, and then you can uh, you can wrap up on this, and then also uh, let people know um, how they can get in contact with you in uh, Kenya. But I just want to know, like, open relating as far as the tree of life. Like, do you find in your uh, counseling sessions with people and stuff that open relation relating actually helps people develop more of the house of the man, more of the house of the woman, you know, more aspects of themselves. Uh, is that something that you find? Yeah. So when you look at the tree of life, you know, the tree of life contains nine basic archetypes, right? Mm-hmm. And what you got to understand is that the archetypes, they don't operate based on the limits that we operate on here on earth in terms of the rules that we've assigned ourselves the cultures right. that we live in, the archetypes, which are basically representatives of, of, of universal law and energy, energy flow, right? Um, mm-hmm. they, don't, they don't care about any of that. They're like, cool, if you mm. want to live your life that way, that's fine, but that's, huh. you know, that's for you to work out. We are, mm. we, here's what we're about. You know, we're about the totality of these nine primary universal laws or energies, right? And so what happens mm. is, the more your life can reflect the, the totality of what they represent, the more you can actually embody each of those archetypes and the pantheon as a whole, right? And so um, all, all our culture does and our, our, our rules and our fears, they just stop us. They cut us off from being able to, to embody those archetypes. The same, again, just like Chinese medicine, if you look at the tree of life is built, you know, all those nine spheres are connected by, you know, Charles Messam called meridian or, or connecting points or lines. Well, that's energy mm-hmm. travels between those lines. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, if, if the energy is cut off because you've limited yourself in some kind of way, then you're not really going to be able to receive the benefits of being inside of that archetype, right? And so open relating it, it allows you to open up to not just relating with other people, but to growth. So, for mm. example, if I, if, if I see that I need to go to a monastery to be celibate for three years because I want to embody the archetype Seker on the tree of life, which is the third sphere according to Kabbalah and, and Kemetic philosophy, then that's mm. something I should feel free to do. I'm not violating the contract. In monogamy, that's violating the contract, potentially to leave my wife without sexual and intimate and touch action from her man. Mm. And so I wouldn't, I would normally not be able to really go there mentally to grow in that way. You see what I'm saying? Because it's, it's potentially a violation, especially if we're in, if we're in childbearing years and et cetera. But no, I, I can go do that regardless because, you know, um, it's a part of who I am and, and my growth and where I need to go. And I can substitute other men in community, et cetera, to come help my wife be supported to do what she's got to do. So yeah, yeah, I can go live, I can go live inside that deity, inside that archetype mm. and, 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 and be that and allow, and allow, you know, my wife to do what she needs to do for herself and, and for the children, et cetera, while I'm in that journey. So that's, that's an example. I mean, you can't. One of the, one of the spheres in the tree of life is is hetero, um, mm. or in our system, Bible system, the lover. Um, mm. You can't if you if you cut yourself off sexually or restrict mm-hmm. yourself off sexually, you can't embody her. Now people say, well, what's the issue, what's the issue with not embodying the lover? The issue is she's what they call in astrology, she's Venus or Aphrodite, and she's what they call the fortune of minor which means she's the gateway to wealth. You can't get to wealth, which is Jupiter, unless you go through Venus. See, Venus says, look, I'm, I'm open to being who I need to be and what I need to be in order to advance myself in life. But if you've cut yourself off with arbitrary rules and protocols just because, then you potentially will cut yourself off to the bounty of life. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about wealth in all of its aspects. Hmm. So that's an all example. Like I that. talk about all this stuff things. at my school uh, when, when, when you go to metapapa.com, M-E-T-A-P-A-P-A.com. Um, I have a school of metaphysics. I talk about the tree of life. I talk about the Bagua astrology. 
the nine universal laws, those types of things, right? Um, but it's the, this stuff is very important, you know, very, very important. In terms of relationship stuff, people could go to jujimamaloveacademy.com and they can sign up for classes. We talk about open relating. We talk about gender. We talk about sexuality, all that type of thing as well. So hopefully people come check us out and, you know, interact with Kenya and I, and we'd love to have people a part of the community. No question. If uh, if they've heard this, man, they heard the voice, they heard the message, man, they, they'd be coming through, trust me. Um, if they, You know, wow, the, the, the gems, man, I, I leave it to the family out there to appraise them. Uh, because that was that was on point, man. Um, hey, man, Carl, I, you know I definitely appreciate you again coming through. You know, uh, sharing your knowledge and everything, man, and uh, and and even more so, you and Kenya, man, what y'all are doing. Uh, I definitely appreciate the work, man. I, I you know I feel like um, y'all are the ambassadors for for this, and and the you know the the the, the seeds that you're planting uh, is actually going to help humanity out. I mean, this will be something that your great grandkids will be benefiting from. Yeah, I appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having me on. And yeah, I'm. Um, you know, we're proud of the fact that we've we've seen some um, some growth in people and expansion, and we know that we've been a part of that. So it, it feels good to know that you know people are asking questions and and you know learning and growing at their pace. Um, right. And we love again. We love to support folks who who are open to it. Amen. Ashe. That's what's up, man. All right, well, family, uh, again, we love you all. We appreciate you all coming through to listen, too. And, uh, again, you're listening to Faux Show Holistic Health on Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Shofar, from Faux Show Energy Work. And uh, you all stay up. Peace. Peace.